Hi, I'm Lisa. I live on the Bayside Estate. I've been there for over 20 years. I'm chair of the residence group, which is strategy and policy group. Hi, my name's James. I'm a Peabody resident in Hackney and I've lived there for about 11 years. My name's Adam. I live in Leytonstone. I've been a Peabody resident for the past 25 years. Well, I've been involved with Peabody and resident groups for about seven years now, partly because of my background in work but also as well as I'm sure a lot of residents can uh, understand because of the issues and I just thought well there must be some way of knowing what's happening and perhaps look for improvements and that's improvements not only just for myself but for all residents. I saw the ad and I thought actually this is a chance that I've been looking for for a while to get involved with how Peabody does things. I've had good and bad experiences with Peabody over the years and I really believe in the concept of social housing and believe Peabody does really important work and I want to help make things better. Um, well I just thought it was important as a resident to make my voice heard and more importantly to make the voice of the wider community heard. I think it's important for residents to get involved in resident groups because it gives them a greater understanding and they can see improvements, they can make change as well. I think it's one thing being a resident and perhaps having a problem, but being on a resident group means you can actually make a difference, you can help solve those problems for all residents, which can only be good. I think it's important for everybody to get as involved as they can be with resident groups because Peabody needs to hear the voices of the people who live in its homes. Um, it should be one organisation which is close to its residents and I think the resident involvement helps Peabody understand um, what's happening with the residents, how residents feel, um, because there's so much that we experience as residents that we wouldn't necessarily feed back to Peabody. Well I think it's important uh, for residents to get involved so they can make their voices heard and me as a social housing tenant for so long for example I think that I've breathed and lived and experienced that maybe those charged with making the policies and creating and developing those policies maybe haven't necessarily lived so I can bring in that lived experience. We've had new members on board since Covid and we've been meeting through uh, virtual meetings and they've been absolutely amazing. I think we've all appreciated the fact that Business can't stop. If we're looking to make improvements for residents, those also need to take place when there is a pandemic. The processes can take quite a long time. But yes, I mean, I have seen improvements, definitely. Um, for example, um, we've been involved with lots of different projects along the line where residents wouldn't normally become involved. For example, contracts for the procurement process and uh, as members we've been involved with that. We've also been invited to come along to um, the training for the staff as well. We get to see both sides, uh, which is very good, and we've seen improvements as well in communication, although not necessarily across the board for all residents, but yes, we have seen improvements. It's given me a greater understanding of housing and how Peabody and housing associations generally work. Certainly on the scrutiny committee, we get to um, interview staff, we get to make recommendations, we get to look at people's operations in um, a really kind of forensic detailed way, um, which I think is really helpful in terms of bringing an external perspective to um, Peabody's improvement. I think it has given me a better understanding of what Peabody does, the kind of constraints that the people are under, um, and really just kind of empathise a bit more with the way the organisation works. I found it really interesting, everyone that we've dealt with from Peabody um, when we've been interviewing them, um, asking them for additional information. Um, the resident involvement team has been incredibly passionate about um, making sure that we get the best information. Um, really, really dedicated to making sure that um, residents actually have a really good experience. Um, so that's been incredibly positive. I've thoroughly enjoyed working with the different teams and with management. They have actually, contrary to popular belief, they have been very, very welcome, very open, always happy and willing to attend meetings and share ideas and take things away. They've always been very enthusiastic when they've been at meetings. They've welcomed discussions, even when we've been critical friends and we've highlighted where improvements could be made. It's always been taken in, in the good spirit that it's been meant. Going to the meetings, and seeing the senior stakeholders there, whether they're um, service directors, managers of different departments, taking what you say seriously, and then coming back after three months and giving you feedback on what they've done and how they're looking to implement, you know, execute your ideas, it gives me 
um, a lot of pride and I think as I said it's important for us as residents to be able to have a channel where we can give our opinions, our voice and um, be part of the process as such. Uh, the positive experiences I've taken away and I'm still having it is I have met some wonderful uh, amazing residents who I consider as my friends as well who I never would have met beforehand. Their enthusiasm and their passion for all things to do with residents and just generally not about uh, just making improvements for themselves but also as well for the future. They're thinking about the families, they're thinking about young people, older people and I'm, I'm just so grateful that I've been able to be part of the discussions that they've had. One of the things that's really positively surprised me about it is the amount of training that we get. Um, so there's internal training from the resident involvement team and they also pay for us to go on external courses um, that are run by leaders in the field. So for example, we've done training on how to do good scrutinies, which has been really interesting and really, from my perspective, helped to expand my mind in terms of the, the different possibilities of scrutiny and the different ways that we could do that. We, we have like away days where we come with a packed agenda. Um, before that, we select what training we want and they offer us training and throughout that day you know you get little bits of training here and there. I'd say I'm much more developed, much more rounded than I was three years ago. I would say if you're nervous or unsure about getting involved, don't be. The only thing you need to be on a resident group is be a resident. Resident groups aren't looking for people with fantastic professional skills or professional backgrounds. It's your experience as a resident that you bring to the table. Young people should definitely apply. It's great experience. It would look great on a CV. I mean, if you look at it as a, as a training scheme almost, and young people have got just as many valuable comments to make. If you're interested, then don't hesitate and get involved. Um, as I've said, there's lots of help available, lots of training. Um, the chairs of the committees are really helpful in terms of explaining what's involved. Um, and really, what's important is your experiences as a resident. That's what people do need to hear. There's nothing to be nervous about. Just, just go for it. Um, it's a very welcoming group. It's a group that has quite a broad range of different personalities, different backgrounds, and it's a group that I've always felt comfortable in. And we work very well together. Everyone gets on well with each other. And I think I've really enjoyed my time, honestly, uh, being part of the group. You just go straight there and you tell them what you think and you do it in your own voice. You be authentic. That's very important because they want to hear your perspective, not somebody else's perspective, your lived perspective. Have a careful think about what you take on and what your responsibilities are. Maybe have a chat to the chair to see how many hours of commitment they would be expecting. Um, I'd say most people will be able to fit around a full-time job, it won't be a problem, but obviously be realistic about what commitments you have. If you work full-time, you have family commitments, obviously you're going to be busy, so you do have to give a bit of extra time for this. We appreciate as well that being volunteers, you may have limited time, but there's such a variety of different ways you can become involved, whether it's actually in a, an established group or whether it's in a focus group, being involved in email groups. Well, the majority of our meetings are typically um, they, they typically happen at 6 o'clock, so 6 to 7, 6 to 8. You come away feeling that you've actually contributed to something towards your community. You've actually now become the voice, the channel for your community to be heard. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing I can tell you uh, in terms of reward that you get out of it.